All right, good afternoon. I'm Bob Sylvester, the Director of Education and Programs here at the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art. And on behalf of AMOCA staff and Board of Trustees, it is my pleasure to welcome, welcome you to this afternoon's Curator's Talk, presented in conjunction with the exhibition Floyd Newsom, Evolution of Sight, on display upstairs in the museum's main galleries through October 8th. Presenting sponsorship for Floyd Newsom, Evolution of Sight, has been provided by Jan and Bill Diatley. Major sponsorship has been provided by Darcy Kind and Mark Vitale. Additional support has been provided by Frank Beer Distributors and New Glarus Brewing Company. Generous support for exhibition programming has been provided by the Wisconsin Arts Board with funds from the state of Wisconsin and the National Endowment for the Arts. As we acknowledge the sponsors who helped bring this exhibition to the museum, I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge the Ho-Chunk people on whose ancestral land Madison was built. Floyd Newsom is a leading American artist whose work has been shown and represented in major institutions and collections across the United States. He was born and raised in Memphis, where his childhood gave him a front row seat to the civil rights movement while being reared by an activist father who was part of the city's first black firefighters. By the age of four, Floyd's mother knew that he was going to be an artist someday, though Floyd himself didn't make that decision until he was in the second or third grade. Floyd later went on to study at the Memphis Academy of Arts and subsequently obtained his MFA from the Tyler School of Art at Temple University in Philadelphia. His professional career began when he was offered a faculty position at the University of Houston downtown, where he has taught art for over 40 years while simultaneously pursuing his career as an artist. His work has been featured in over 100 exhibitions, though Evolution of Sight is his first major museum retrospective. Amoka is incredibly proud to share his artwork with the Madison community. Two guest curators have been vital in bringing this exhibition to life. Mark Cervenka is a professor of art and director of the O'Kane Gallery at the University of Houston downtown, who looked at Floyd's early formative works. Mark has previously curated an exhibition of Floyd's work at the O'Kane Gallery in 2018, and is currently working on a catalog documenting the artist's long career. Dr. Lauren Cross, who focused on Floyd's recent years, approached the exhibition with an eye on how his practice has evolved, especially in relation to Ho's most recent work, since the pandemic served to amplify his creative outlook. Lauren is a curator, interdisciplinary artist, and critical scholar who was recently appointed as the Gail Oxford Associate Curator of the American Decorative Arts at the Huntington. Please join me in welcoming Mark Cervenka and Lauren Cross. Thank you, Bob, and um, we also, Mark and I would like to thank Dr. <coughs> Christina Brungard um, for inviting us to guest curate this amazing exhibition. Um, and so we thought it would be a great opportunity for us to have a bit of a conversation and then we will invite you all in uh, to that conversation as we go along. And I do wanna say before we get into that conversation that uh, the collaboration with the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art has been a really great experience. Um, Marnie, Deborah, um, Tim and Paige on the installation team have been just super to work with. So we've been uh, very excited, very happy. Uh, it's been a great experience. And of course, working with you, Lauren, has been um, a really, really um, great experience as well. And uh, it's a good collaboration. And of course, all that centers on the artist, Mr. Floyd Newsom. So. Yes, and we thank Floyd as well. So much of it was a collaboration with Floyd as well, like, you know, um, and really getting a sense of his vision as well, like checking in oh, yeah. um, to make sure that our, um, our assessments of his career and his journey matched up with how he saw his practice as well. So. Definitely, we, we appreciate um, just your generosity in allowing us to tell your story. We really appreciate that. So. You know, the story's long. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is. And uh, when we started this, when Christina approached us about, about doing this, um, you know, Peg Floyd, and I look at look at a lot of work, and kept getting emails with slides. And, oh, here's a thumb drive; it's gonna be better. And then there would be, <laughs> and then at some point he gave me three binders, green binders of slides. <laughs> and uh, and and I mean, some of you may not know what those are, but <laughs> but uh, 
but going back into the 70s, uh, and so we were looking through those and scanning in the slides so that we could get a, a working kind of set to, to start to pick from. Mm -hmm. and I think at some point we had well over 300, mm -hmm. uh, and that didn't in really include all the drawings. So, uh, so it was, a, um, it was a, a task. It was a really labor of love in a lot of ways, really. And one of the great things about curating the exhibit is, is being able to do a deep dive like that mm -hmm. and see the breadth of, of someone's work, see how, how it evolves from the time they're an undergraduate in college all the way to today. And uh, so, right, we had all of those images and, and then the museum sent us this plan because neither Lauren or I had, had been here. And uh, we started looking at the plan and trying to scale the images down and thinking about, well, how can we fit this in? And, and we can't leave all these things out, right? Yeah. And you had had the prior experience of um, working with Floyd on an exhibition at UHD. Yes. Um, that really kind of culminated his, his career. Um, and for me, me being a fan of Floyd's work, um, it's, it's it's one thing to know an artist and to, to really admire their work. It's another thing to actually curate a show on their work. Um, so for me, I, I wanted to make sure that I understood all the nuances um, and didn't miss anything. So I had the opportunity to interview, a couple, interview you a couple times, um, and which I still have <laughs> as artifacts um, okay. for your archive. Um, and that was really a privilege, you know, to really um, do a dig deep dive. And, you know, we looked at specific works and you talked very um, much in detail about each work. Um, and so that helped me to understand, like, you know, which works really were pivotal, um, which works were like a must have. And I just remember the excitement of uh, Floyd saying, this is what defines me now. And that I just really, um, I'll never forget that, you know, just understanding that evolution um, of an artist and how, um, you know, you can be excited about certain works at different stages of your life, um, but just his productivity during the pandemic and how that really um, birthed a whole new energy for him as an artist. Um, it's really inspiring. And so that was that was a major story that I felt like I wanted to make sure came through um, so that people would see that this is an ongoing love affair with art that started at four years old. I don't know, but I didn't have that. I didn't have that awareness uh, as an artist at four. Like a, that wasn't um, my experience. So I just greatly admire that you knew that early on that this is, this is a major part. But you know what? Talk about, because your early childhood in Houston and its proximity to Project Row House yeah. um, was a big part of kind of being introduced to that. And Absolutely. I think it's a, it's a really important part of his career um, to kind of set a stage a little bit for, um, for how we're going to talk about it and, and the first um, section that we're going to be talking about. So. Yes. Talk about Project Row Houses a little bit and how you got. Yes, aware I mean, of that. I think being a child of Houston and um, even though like my family didn't live physically in Third Ward, our church was in Third Ward, and mm -hmm. so wherever your church is, that's kind of where you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so growing up and so much of my upbringing being in the Third Ward community, going to the Shape Center. Um, you know, just all of these different places that like really shape my memories. Um, and so when Project Row Houses was started, I just remember being a child and just, you know, there being block parties and, um, and just being, just seeing the transformation of the community. And I remember what the community looked like before. And I remember what happened after. Before it was, it was. I remember like there being a lot of contention in the community. I remember conversations as a child of hearing the adults talking about we've got to do something in the community. Um, and so when all this was happening, 
I felt like a like a kid in a candy store, <laughs> just seeing all this activity and energy. And um, my church uh, had a house, Trinity United Methodist Church had a house um, with its name on it. So I felt like as a kid that like, oh wow, this is like a part of our, our whole story as a community. Um, so I feel like being introduced to his legacy that early, that early on from a community standpoint, you know, some artists just stay in their studio. They don't have these other outlets um, to impact the community. And so I think that's what really, um, as we go into the our first section, which, you know, when you go in the exhibition, that's the first thing you see is social justice and community. You you understand how much that's a big part of his his legacy um, within the Houston community, but also beyond, you know, to, to demonstrate how an artist can not only be about their personal practice, but also be about a, a larger impact in their world. Before we uh, move to that first section, if you could go back one, just um, so this is Floyd in his studio, and you guys may, uh, if you've been upstairs, you'll see yellow spirits behind him here, and uh, before it was framed, and he talked about anybody here last night. Yeah, great, great. So you know he talked about that last night. And uh, this is in the studio, uh, and, and you see how prolific he is. There is artwork everywhere. And, uh, and then over here, I just, I love seeing art studios and their, their tools and how they work. And so uh, um, we have a little shot of, he didn't know I took, but I took it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, give, it, give him a little context of, of his work in space, so. All right, we can go to the next slide. And social justice and community. And, and as we go um, and go ahead to, to this, um, before we left Project Row Houses, I just encourage everybody, look it up, Google it, and find out more about, the, about it as an organization. It's a really, really amazing <clears throat> and prominent organization. But let's go ahead with the Reverend. So the Reverend is a really important piece, and we saw it, we we really saw the connections between the Reverend and a lot of other um, community oriented or um, social justice oriented works in the collection. And we decided really early on not to have a chronological show, even though the Reverend is like in the very beginning of the show, but just understanding that it, it's the beginning, you know, as Floyd talks about you know, that he's really a prolific realist painter as well. You know, he he can do both and, and not every artist can. We, we know that <laughs> being artists that not every artist can do that. So I think it was important to kind of start out with the Reverend um, stylistically, but also understanding how important that was, you know, him being a senior um, in university <clears throat> And then not just the realism itself, but the the story he was trying to tell about the Reverend, I think is the same kind of, the essence of that is really the same kind of story that he's telling through his abstract works as well. Yeah, uh, it, and, and as we were trying to pare down and looking at all of those 300 or so works, <clears throat> and you looking at them and looking at them and really studying them and, and we sort of began to see certain themes that were evolving, um, themes that were um, transcending different time periods. Mm -hmm. And so that's where Lauren kind of said, well, you know, what if we just kind of think about it in that way mm -hmm. and help us to organize the show? Yes. And so um, uh, we, we started making lists of basic thematic ideas that, that we were seeing. And one thing that's certainly true uh, is that there are a lot of the works, they're very layered both physically and uh, thematically. And so some of, a lot of the works could fit in different areas. Mm -hmm. But we um, looked at works that we felt like um, made a, a particular good statement and, and a rounded set of works within a particular area. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, the Reverend here uh, his story 
right, is that he was a reverend, but also a janitor in the college that Floyd was was going to school in as an under, undergrad. At, um, and uh, the way Floyd talks about it uh, is that he just wasn't very well respected. You know, you mentioned it last night. We didn't show the image, but mm -hmm. that as a janitor, um, as a custodian, I mean, we all kind of know that. It's like, well, okay, this is the person who has maybe lowest on the totem pole in terms of uh, status, right, in the work environment. Uh, and uh, Floyd wanted to elevate that person. And he didn't want that person to feel like that uh, he was any less important, any less of a person than anybody else in that school. And uh, so paints him with this dapper coat and shirt and I mean, you know, very, very nice, right? And a nice hat and in profile, kind of looking on. And so um, it's, a, it's a very um, uh, respectful uh, portrait of, of this man. And that idea of seeing people uh, as equal, seeing mm -hmm. people uh, and being respectful for people really emanates throughout his whole career and himself as a person. I mean, I've worked with him almost daily for 23 years at UH Downtown, and I am well aware of that. When we go down the hallways and uh, he sees a custodian or he sees somebody, uh, you know, he, I'm Floyd, you know, I'm not Professor Newsom. And that's his character. And, it, and it, it came through early on in 1972, and it comes throughout, I think, all of the work mm -hmm. uh, in different ways throughout the entire career. Absolutely. We can um, go to the next slide. Um, and we, when we reflect, you know, you can you can see that he's he's loosened um, that more like tighter, realistic um, rendering, and he's starting to go into more abstract figures. Um, but then he includes he includes figures in through these photographic transfers. Um, and I, I love going around with him and asking him, like, who is this? And who is this? And who is this? I think we could write a whole book on, <laughs> on all of the people that Floyd features in his work. Um, this is the young Malcolm X, and there's a uh, small Frederick Douglass over there. And then there's all of these, um, like his marks, you know, playful, some playful, some guiding you to these different figures. Um, in the image, you see a kite, you know, all, the, all these signature icons that are so significant in his work, the house, pattern, all those things, you start to, to see the essence of that um, in this, uh, that front section. Mm -hmm. But still there's that reverence. So that same reverence mm -hmm. um, that you see in the reverend, you see that coming into these historic figures as well. Um, and, and, and in a sense, this vibrancy you see, you know, there's this saying, lest we forget, right? Um, and in this work, it's when we reflect, right? So there's that, that sense of not wanting to forget um, all of these, the works that these ancestors have done to get us to where we are today. That's it's the same kind of sensitivity in that way. Yeah, and um, I, I really encourage everybody to pay attention to his titles. I always have found them so poetic. And I know he's married to a librarian. So, uh, <laughs> so words are important, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. And, and he, he really, really um, pay attention to those. I mean, it's a, it's a nuance. When we reflect, really ask you to, to think, to be thoughtful, mm -hmm. to think, to think about these things reflect on these things and see where you are. So, um, yeah, so we can go on. Yeah. Next slide. And then you, you see this happening in his public artwork as well. Like you see the visual language, um, his mark. Um, and one of the things what I love about public art, and I've had the opportunity to be on a, quite a few public art panels is the ways in which it allows an artist to 
Um, it's like art appreciation, like out in the public, you know, so you get a chance to really appreciate an artist um, in a way that, you know, if you never, if you were never to go into a museum, never go into a gallery, you know, you're being introduced to an artist in the public realm. And I think my first encounter with Floyd's work was through his public art. Um, and so uh, one of our family friends, which is how I uh, learned about Arizona, uh, was like, well, you know, her, you know her dad because you've seen his art around the city. Mm. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, I've seen, I've seen I, I think the first work that I saw was the planner. Um, and we were big uh, ensemble, ensemble theater goers. Re really was like raised up in the ensemble theater. Um, and and um, this particular family friend was on the board of ensemble. And so she was like, oh, you've seen his work, you know, cause you've been to the ensemble theater, um, which is off, off of Main Street. So um, that, that can oftentimes be that first introduction, you know, that um, us as a public have with an artist. And I think, you know, sometimes some artists have a negative perspective of public art. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't get a chance to do what I want to do. But Floyd really has a way of working in public art where you, you, you can see the same marks that you would see in his painting. You're going to see it in his public art. So he, he knows how to translate um, his work in a really profound way in the public realm. And then you, you see all those yes, same marks exactly. um, throughout his career. And it's a, it's a fairly abstract work in, in a sense. Um, but as you'll see, and as you see in the exhibit, as, as he's evolved, uh, uh, his work has gotten a lot more abstract. Mm -hmm. um, and many of those things, though, have, have a basis in, in an idea. And, and this, this is right in kind of the most visible, important part of downtown Houston. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was uh, commissioned to do this. I won't go into the whole story, because you know, we'll need time. But um, uh, it, it really is about kind of the founding people, the way that community comes together to form, uh, to form a city, to form a place. And, you know, that, that planter <clears throat> has little symbols in there that on one side there's the Astrodome, I guess that's right there on the yellow, and uh, different other symbols that, that, that relate to Houston, but also just uh, a kind of, uh, as, as Lauren was saying, mark making that's full of color. Mm -hmm. It's very vibrant. And you can't look at it and not sort of imagine, I can't. Um, and not imagine uh, kind of growth and kind of uh, the way that the, the planter gets bigger as it moves up. And if you, you know, see it up in the, uh, in the galleries from a distance, you just see it almost like a bouquet, you know, flowering up. And uh, so we see that and the stems all along here are part of that. Those aren't in the, as part of the maquette or the model upstairs, but, um, uh, but they, they kind of have that, that continued outgrowth in there, and one of the great things about the way that Floyd is working with this as public art is that uh, kids just are drawn to this like magnets. Mm -hmm. You know, they see this as yes, happy, color, fun, movement. You know, mm -hmm. how do I, how do I, how do I be a part of this? Absolutely. And and that's important. You know, thinking about bringing people together in community. And I think. I think that's a big part of this work too. Absolutely. And I think that that's the color, his color choices, right? And are very inviting in that way and are the types of colors that I think do spark that connection with kids, with people of all ages. So, you know, he's really masterful with color. He talked about yesterday about how certain artists their use of color, he really admired. And, and so he took the, the same principles and he's applied that in his own um, playing with color in that way. Uh, next slide. And then we've talked a lot about the ladder, right? And how that becomes an important 
icon in his work, referencing his, his dad, um, who was one of the first um, firefighters in Memphis. Um, and so again, translating that same concept that you would see in many of his paintings is now like a, a key figure within a public art sculpture. Yeah, and, and so this is uh, the, the model that, we, that is upstairs. And then this is uh, a photograph of the actual work um, at Acres Home Multi-Service Center. Acres Home is an area slightly north of Houston. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the latter, uh, as, as Lauren says, is a very important, and you'll see that throughout. It does honor his father, as he talked about last night. Mm -hmm. But it also, um, and I think Floyd's talked about this, it, it, it's a, a symbol of, of growth, of mm -hmm. ascension, of possibility, and as he said last night, of hope. Yes. And so it's, it's moving beyond, moving upward, moving yes. forward. And so all of the little symbols, the family, the trees, and, and uh, all of those things are, are part of that climb for that community. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody's included, right? Everybody's included yes. in, that, in that hope. So, so we wanted to um, show, because we have the models, we wanted to, we thought it'd be great to show kind of the finished or, or the uh, photographs of the uh, actual works. Today. And in the, in the gallery, this was really an awesome serendipitous moment of how it was displayed ultimately, because I think initially we were gonna display this a little differently. Um, and then uh, the idea came about to <laughs> suspend it. And we're like, well, yeah, of course, because that's exactly how um, it's displayed. That's how it is in real life. So that was a really awesome moment in the gallery. And that was during, Christina. That was the Christina. The director who had that idea. So we were very, um, that, was a, that was a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. So um, so yeah, it, it has the same feeling of, of suspension as it does in real life. Next slide. Okay, so we, we ended up with six thematic areas. And we have the um, social justice and community and and we're, we're gonna hit just like on a couple of pieces from each, each area and um, just kind of introduce those, I think. Uh, so within those six, we've done social justice community. The next one we're gonna look at is angels and souls. You can go to the first, first slide. And um, so faith mm -hmm. is, is a very, very important thing. It's very important to Floyd, I know this. And it, it, it is, uh, uh, comes out in his work both subtly and directly in various pieces. And um, this is kind of uh, an interesting work, I think, because it's from 96. And you know, one of the other things that we were very cognizant of is that this is a retrospective. And so to include works from all periods, right, to kind of get that, that Range. So this is a uh, um, 1996 called Three Souls Gathering, and it's gouache on paper. And again, if you were here last night, you know that, that he loves working on paper, mm -hmm. and that's his thing. And um, gouache is, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's it's a water-based paint, um, something like watercolor, but it's very opaque. And so, and Floyd is really a master at that. Uh, we'll see a, a one even earlier that I'm going to show you that, that is really remarkable, too, in what gouache can do. Uh, but uh, so, so this shows him uh, abstracting the work, uh, not really being realistic in terms of like the reverend. Uh, so sty heavily stylizing, abstracting the, the mm -hmm. narrative. And uh, so, you know, I think. In, in look, it's a pretty complex painting in many ways, but you have this kind of uh, hill or, um, you know, kind of an acropolis that, mm -hmm. that stands <laughs> up, right, you know? Yeah. And, um, and there are ladders that you have to go up to get up on top of here. Mm -hmm. And in the central part, you have this, this, this woman, this figure, is like having a picnic, and um, there's a little, little hut over here with, chicken coming out. He told a story last night about his chickens, right? You know, mm -hmm. why, you know the, whole, the whole folklore behind that, um, uh, about 
chickens being sent from God to peck the earth so that it would flatten it out. <laughs> so a lot of kind of intertwining of, of stories and things, but, um, but we've got this woman here and she's facing back this way, facing this, this other figure in the far right corner mm -hmm. and kind of hands up, right? And the woman in the far right corner is blue and hands are out. And so you've got, you've got that kind of relationship. And then over here on the left, in this kind of sea, water floating, you have this sort of magical blue figure over on the left. Mm -hmm. And so you've got the title, Three Souls Gathering. And uh, I've I, I looked at this for a long time, this, this painting, and it, and it, for me, has this kind of relationship between seeing uh, where we are here on this earth as the woman here and, and, um, and, and then uh, aspiring to that next life, aspiring, aspiring to that next level and, and that soul moving onward uh, to heaven. And so um, there, there are these, these, these kind of um, aspirations. There's this connection with maybe past folks there, and, and you, can, you can really interpret this in a lot of different ways, and that's also very much a part of Floyd's work. But it, it, it allows for um, a, a kind of uh, ascendance, I think, from a solid corporal figure to a more uh, elevated figure, to a very ephemeral figure over here. Mm -hmm. And all of those are kind of intertwined, and, and we're all around that. We, we have that within us all the time. And it's, it's just a very um, um, present way of thinking about both our, our physical presence and our spiritual presence, I think. Yeah, and that, it, it really makes me think of um, that scripture that talks about, you know, where three or more gather together in my name, their, you know, their God is in the midst of that. And so just the power, the power of souls gathering, right? Yeah bringing about that ascension, right? I think that um, there's, there are all these things happening, but because they're gathering, all these other things are, are kind of coming together um, in a lot of ways. There's movement, um, there's like almost this kind of river on, on, the, on the, um, the, water. the water. So all of these things are kind of happening around these souls gathering. And you, you see that the ladder, that ladder of hope the ladder. Um, as kind of like an output of that. You know, what, right. a, what does these souls gathering, what does that do? It brings about hope. Right. If you're going through something, you know, and you're able to share that load or that burden with others, you know, it brings about hope in that way. So in this section of the gallery, we really wanted to celebrate Floyd's faith, you know, because... You know, as you as you heard last night, he has a lot of faith. He has a lot of joy that really comes out in his work and in so much of his stories about um, about faith come out in this particular section of the show, for sure. Next, Next slide. Um, so many paths, one direction. Uh, it, to me. From a compositional standpoint, it's just a beautiful painting. Yes. It has a beautiful balance, both vertically and horizontally, and yet there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. right? uh, there's a lot of minutia, and there's three-dimensional objects that have been applied to the surface. Um, and <clears throat> You know, a lot of the iconography in there, I don't, you probably don't have time to kind of go into all of that, but the, the snake over here, the blue snake, and you know, one of the things he has talked about, talked about last night, was if, if the snake is blue, it's a good snake. Mm -hmm. It forecasts good harvest, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so there's a lot of that in there. But we have some words over here, out of Egypt, and, and then, um, have I sent my son? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, out of Egypt, and so we, you know, think, okay, leaving Egypt, and and 
for a lot of people that might reference uh, Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. And it's very biblical. And so we think about um, that path that they had to take. Um, and, and so we think about a path and we think about, uh, okay, here I have, I have all my choices in my life. I have this path. There are many ways, there are many things I can do, but yet one direction. And that one direction um, um, holds a foundation for, for an individual. And that foundation is, is, at least for Floyd, I think, based in that faith. Yes. That Absolutely. faith in God and in Christ. And so, um, you know, how that works uh, compositionally, you know, you have a, a, a bisection between the white and the black on the, uh, horizontally, but that cube in the middle creates a structure that's just so perfect. It's tilted, though, mm -hmm. and it creates a transparent structure upon which that path is going to traverse. Yes. And to me, that's just a beautiful metaphor for thinking about the faith as a, um, as a, as a, as a structure upon which to make your decisions as you're moving forward. Yeah, and you know, he always talks about the box, right? That the box is that symbol of either freedom or bondage in a lot of ways. You know, I think about out of Egypt as like, um, as as scriptural, scriptural and biblical for you know, coming out of bondage or coming right. out of a situation um, that has held you bound. And you see the box is like kind of straddling between, you know, this light and darkness, right? right. right. Um, and so I think there's, a, there's a, all these metaphors, I think, Lots. Um, and yeah. symbols that you can see. Um, and then you can see the women who are, are soaring or, or trying to soar. And, and he always talks about his hand as well, like the hand being present in the work as well. It's, it's, you know, it could be, you know, a self portrait or it could also be the hand of God, right? right. Um, right. Working, moving certain things um, with, within these decisions that one has to make as well. So next, next slide. We're, we're gonna have to hurry up. And I'm realizing that, <laughs> but as you can um, see, there's a lot of, there's a lot, there's a lot of amazing about. works to talk um, about. So this is a, a, mo a, a model of a piece that uh, Floyd did for his church, Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. And uh, if you can go to the next slide, this is an image of, of the installation of that piece in the actual church. And so you can see the scale of it, mm -hmm. right? And um, there, is, there is a lot of narration within that work about uh, Christianity and about the founding of that church. Mm -hmm. And um, we will let you explore that so we don't miss out on any of the things. Not to disrespect the church here, but there's a, you know, you, you'll, you'll be able to um, really get into that and see that um, in the model upstairs. Yes, and, and Willow Avenue Baptist Church is a, is a major African-American church in Houston. And so to have, have this as a part of, a show, of the show, which is also where your members, yes. um, is such a powerful um, historical, it's historical, but also a, and a powerful example of his public art. Yeah. Um, kind of private public. In, in it's it's sense. an exquisitely beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really, really is. Uh, and you see it in person. But uh, looking at the model upstairs, it's made in the, in the same uh, materials. And the, the plexiglass is printed in the same way on the backside. Uh, so you get a good feel for it. But we really wanted you to get a good, good sense of the scale of it. OK, next slide. Women, family, and ancestors. Um, next slide. You know, we really wanted to, you heard Floyd talk yesterday a lot about honoring women, honoring family and ancestors um, in his work. And I think that all of those things are, are pretty revolutionary um, for an artist um, in the art world sometimes. Um, one is sometimes encouraged not to talk about any of these things ancestors, family, women, those right. are kind of like right. taboo. 
yeah, they're totally taboo, but this is this is really where he is being completely um, progressive and saying, nope, I'm going to celebrate women um, and I'm going to celebrate my family. Um, I think when we did our uh, docent tours, I was mentioning how, you know, when I work with other artists, they often, and some of my student artists have talked about that they were discouraged to have children or to talk about children in their work because it's it's this whole taboo. But here we have Arizona uh, and Iman celebrated in his work. He's a, he's very proud to be a father. He's proud of his children. Um, and just it just comes out so much in, in his work and how he talks about his children. Um, so we, we wanted to honor that in, in the show because that's such a huge part of who he is. Yeah. He talks a lot about being a family man um, and how home, you know, the symbol of home becomes such a critical um, representation of his mother and those values, right? Yeah, Anything you want to say about this? Um, no, I, I think that's absolutely right. And there's a consistency in how you treat everyone, you know, you Absolutely. have your family, you treat them. And, and that, that goes through all of his work and you see that here um, very definitely. The house, when you see a house drawn out in his work, it, it often represents home and family. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's a very important um, part of that. And two different styles, talking about family, you know, this is more of a collage with gouache and then this is, you know, more of this looser figure, figurative right. expression. Um, women soaring. Yes. Um, he talks a lot about um, wanting to ensure that his kids know that they, they can soar, they can be um, successful. So. Yeah, no glass ceilings. No you glass ceilings. No glass ceilings. Kids. <laughs> no glass ceilings. And they don't have them, let me they tell don't. you. They don't. They are doing Extremely great. successful. Yeah. So just makes sense. Okay, next. Um, and then assume all about, you know, again, family and and how you can't assume things about um, you know, figures uh or people based on their appearance, based on what you think about them. Mm -hmm. He has his great grandmother Janie in this work 126 times. 126. Grandma and then Janie. of course there's Josephine Baker. <laughs> Uh, and Floyd, I mean, who is Josephine Baker? My yeah, but if you didn't hear that, it's his he, girlfriend. He also includes his wife in this work as well. So you know, she is she is at the center of this work. Okay, um, but just the idea that you can't assume anything about people and just how all these strong women, you know, mm -hmm. that he celebrates in his work and, and honors. Um, which I think is just amazing. Yeah, and that, that idea of not assuming anything about anyone, I mean, that's such a crucial thing. It goes back to the Reverend in 1972, right? Mm -hmm. Don't assume this person is less than you just because he's a custodian. Yeah. And um, again, I'm going to reference having worked with Floyd for 23 years, he lives that. That's real. Mm -hmm. So. Next slide. And then um, Sarigu, Janie's Journey, and we'll talk a little bit more about the Sarigu, which is a, a huge aspect of his work um, and how he's including his great grandmother, Janie. But now we're starting to see even more this expression of the marks mm -hmm. um, and then um, and how that is related to this community of women that are have so inspired his marks, mark making and like prioritizing that mm -hmm. in a lot of ways and freeing him to be, um, to, to, to not feel so pressured to represent that figure right. in a traditional way. Yeah, and as, as Janie, of course, uh, Floyd's great grandmother, uh, and you think about this as a journey, uh, just think about what this makes you feel like when you look at this, you mm -hmm. know, it's a joyous, constant movement of, of, of color and line, and it, it just doesn't stop, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's a lot we could talk about in terms of that, but I, I think when you approach a work like this of Floyd's, 
uh, you really just want to go find one little spot and then see <laughs> where that takes you. Right. And it will take you all the way through the whole painting. Absolutely. And when you get done with that, you've had this journey and you've explored all this stuff. Mm -hmm. and, you, and so I think, you know, uh, again, going back to assume, you think about great grandma Janie and assume this, but this is an expression of a life lived. Exactly. It's complex. Very it's complicated. Complex. Um, and it's like you have the house and she's in the house, but yes. then there's all this whole world, you know, around around her that he's created to kind of demonstrate how complicated it must have been for her in yeah. a lot of ways. Um, and next slide, um, we wanted to show an example of the Sirigu, there, those wall paintings that he talks about being inspired by. And there's so many different uh, images of their works some that like show these kind of uh, figures of uh, animals and fish and, you know, to kind of get a sense of like how those types of symbols could be inspiring to Floyd's work as well, which goes into, um, which goes this, into the next the section, section on the Serigu and, Trans and Transcendus. And um, uh, Floyd has talked long about the idea that the, this village in Ghana where these women would annually paint these earthen architectural walls mm -hmm. uh, that, that allowed them to, to decorate, but also to express the, mm -hmm. the, the people that lived in those homes in particular ways. Yes. You know? and, uh, and it was the women that were charged with doing that. And because the rain would come, they'd have to do it every so often. So it was, uh, it kind of took the takes the preciousness off the artwork in a way and says, mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's going to be here for a while. It's going to go away. Mm -hmm. And Floyd's talked about that freeing him up a lot and not feeling like he was uh, uh, cornered into painting realism, you know. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, he really kind of takes that to heart. And, and, and in these two pieces, 2011 and 2021, so 10 years apart, um, they're they're really um, apt, you know really non-representational works, mm -hmm. and uh, taking that idea of of being able to internalize his artistic vision and being mm -hmm. able to explore um, how how that might look on on canvas or on paper. Sorry, Floyd, no canvas. <laughs> and, um, and and almost extract. At abstracting these events. He talks about the event in Chicago and yeah. how he sees these circles of ice um, and, and finding these unique ways of, of, of presenting that in an abstract way rather than being so detailed and trying to um, represent that. It's, it's so much more expressive and it shows kind of like the joy of like, um, of seeing, like seeing circles of ice. You know, how would you express that? Yeah, and you know, I think so. I gaze into the night and see hope. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, again, pay attention to those titles. Yes, they're very important. But the works also do that. And so, with with this one, you have you cannot. It's hard to see. Go upstairs, look at it. But just a blue field with some faint circles, one on the bottom and one on the top, and then a ladder in one, and then collaged onto the surface are all these crayons and crepas and different sorts of things. And, and like with this one, when he saw Lake Michigan frozen over and from Houston, that's a, quite a sight. Mm -hmm. um, and you see that and you see how they were frozen over. There, there, there's an immensity in nature. There's an immensity in the universe. Mm -hmm. And you know we can connect that in terms of transcendence. We can connect that to faith. In a lot of ways, um, it's a it's 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 like being awestruck. In some ways, I always think about these as like being awestruck at the at, at how remarkable this world is, mm -hmm. how how nature is so vast, and yet it it has a way of balancing, it has yes. a way of organizing, and so I I often see that, especially with the with the uh, winter in Chicago day and night. Um, that that the that there's it's a very simple composition in one rectangle on top of the other, 
but within that there's just so much movement mm -hmm. there's there's things hidden in there mm -hmm. and those marks reflect back on floyd's hand and vision and with this one um you know you think about the night and you think about the universe and it's vast and and all of that but at the same time it's so intimate because we have his tools as a creator present for us yeah. collaged on here so that universe is both vast in the night it's also in here you know in the artist as the creator and that one ladder in there ascending an ascension and seeing where that's going to go and their clues there at least these symbols are often clues to help interpret and to understand you know how um like the the emotion that mm -hmm. the blue gives it's a color that's often um used for spiritual for the spirit mm -hmm. right? right um or heavenly um and that ladder of hope gives you that extra extra bit of information we'll go to the next, next slide one. um so we wanted to put this in here, um, 1984. This is a gouache piece. Please go up and take a look at it if you haven't. Um, it has both a component of faith. It has a both component of transcendence in here. Mm -hmm. And you see this young woman emerging out of the cloak that's on the, on the uh, a chair. A bird up here, image of flight, but she's She's really emerging out into this place of, with the patterning of the, the floral patterning around, and then outside um, is the chandelier mm -hmm. from one of the earliest African American churches in in Houston. Yes. And uh, which which Floyd attended when they were first in Houston, mm -hmm. and so that 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 transcendence um, has many meanings here. It has the emergence of this young woman as a as a person. Going, coming coming out into the world, but it also has that possibility of spiritual emergence. Yes, and as you can see, this was in 1984, so he's still, you know, working in this more realistic realm at that at that time. But works um, so well with those previous works that we were just talking about. You know, they're they're almost like the the expression, the emotion of what this this work is describing. You know, that experience of coming coming out and um, being transcended, those uh, abstracts work just kind of express those those ideas. So he's been really working with these ideas for a long time. I love this piece because of the Antioch um, church and that historical, um, the marker uh, within Houston, which is where Reverend Gates was the pastor, was the originating pastor, right? Um, so you have, in that space, you have Antioch and you have Wheeler Avenue. So you have this interesting yep. intersec intersection of, of how, like, church as an institution can be a transcending vehicle for a community. Yeah. Absolutely. Next, Next slide. slide. Um, we got two more sections. I know we're getting... We're, get, we're but, getting through it. But, there's there's um, a lot of goodness. At so the go ahead in the next slide. So, you know, we... A little bit about nature, you know, the idea that the world we live in um, is profound in so many ways. It's it's the world we have, and it's it's uh, you know created, and 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 there's a uh, uh, a relationship between us and uh, and that that world. And uh, so, in this, it's a really large piece, 1994, primary landscape. Uh, I had seen this in Floyd's studio in a case where all these panels were in a, a portfolio for years, I think, and just seen individual pieces and I never saw it kind of put together. We pulled it out into the gallery and, and pulled it out. I was like, oh, wow, you know. Um, it, and I would just uh, quickly say that um, there's the idea of the female figure in here with the brilliance of the color, the blues and the reds, and how they um, are almost like constellations mm -hmm. in a way. Um, part of the universe, part of that larger um, cosmos, and they are floating and they are soaring. And then we, we have our, our more 
um, understandable landscape in both the upper register and the lower register. And, and we see the soaring woman here. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, uh, as he's abstracted, is he's created these landscapes um, with fewer and fewer lines here. Mm -hmm. And so it really reflects that way in which he's drawn the women. It really reflects the idea that he doesn't have to be realistic at that mark mm -hmm. making, that bringing in the color, um, and, and reduces the whole idea to its simplest form. Mm -hmm. um, and allows us to kind of appreciate it uh, in, in a really um, a beautiful way. Yes, and then thinking about the, the prior work, which is like 1984, here's nine, 10 years later, and you can see, you can see where that, that big arc and transition of, of how you're uh, representing the figure um, in the sky, in the landscape, and how nature can provide that that sense of freedom. Um, and I love how he always talks about his women soar. And, um, and particularly they soar in nature. So nature can be that, that space. Mother um, Earth. Yep, Mother Earth, <laughs> where they can soar. Next slide. Uh, and, and this is, um, takes on a lot of those same ideas, but in a much more recent piece, 2016. And uh, we have, you can't really see it here, but there's um, sort of like a mother and a child, the child sitting on the knee, and, and they're in this kind of cozy little atmosphere and having this conversation like the you know, talking about together with the child. Mm -hmm. And so you sort of extrapolate almost like a thought rectangle above them, and here's the kite soaring, the only thing with brilliant color. Mm -hmm. And so um, that, the kite has the same sensibility as, as the bird or the mm -hmm. fish of the sea, right. you know, kind of this idea of freedom and, and where that can take you. Yes. And uh, you, you get, a, um, I think, a little bit of a feel that that, that conversation is about the possibilities that might happen um, mm -hmm. w w within that. And you have the blue snake, which means it's a good, something's good happening. Something good's going to happen at this. Yeah, the blue snake is there. Mm -hmm. so. Next slide. And then the final section, um, contemplation, is where we're thinking about this very productive period that Floyd had. Um, during the pandemic, he talks about it being like really uh, a, a really powerful transformative time uh, within his practice. Um, and then it also, so for him, allowed him to think about the whole of his career um, as well as, you know, the emergence of, you know, these marks really taking the center stage. Um, this is, you know, uh, The Journey Never Ends was in 2002. So we see, like, these, these marks kind of emerging in a major way. We see these symbols, the blue snake, the fish, the patterns. Um, I, like, I like how the figure um, that he talks about that, that famous story of uh, that Egyptian myth that inspired him, where at first he started out with the with the stick figure, and then he read that myth about the the dog being the protector of the woman, and then he, then he drew the uh, the skirt <laughs> on the woman. So you actually can kind of see where that happened. Yes, <laughs> um, and how that ended up like literally being a transformative. Um, point in his career right. to kind of really think about um, that myth being represented with the dog, and we see the dog ever since. Um, but then you can kind of see that journey, right? Um, because it's almost like the figure is going down the stairs and it's going to be, you know, going up the ladder on the other end. So it's like really re reflective of a journey, you know. But the, the but the dog is going to protect right along the way. And before we move on, this has some text in it. It says, mm -hmm. why not? That's right. And that's, and you know, why not? Mm -hmm. If you say no, why? Yeah. You know, don't just say no. Or if somebody says, you can't do this, why not? You and know? it's like the, um, the fact that he talks about there's no glass ceilings. Right. It, it relates so much to that. You know, there are no glass ce ceilings. So anything that you're wanting to do or thinking about, why not? Because there, there's no real ceiling here. 
and the journey never ends is you know we our our journey that title you know it's a contemplative thing you know it never really ends we you know we think about that we contemplate that and if we go to the next slide i think that really kind of will finish us off here with that idea and you know as mark said you got to pay attention to the titles right so this is Siragu 1619 very like that that's kind of deep right there mm -hmm. um those two um Saragu, you know, thinking about how it, that has influenced Floyd's work, but then 1619 is when the, um, in, and I know you were thinking of it this way, Floyd, the, those original Africans coming um, to the United States. So like, there's a, there's a big moment of contemplation to think about with this piece. Um, and yet there's, there's so much creativity and vibrancy and there's, there's a lot of hope you know, even though the, it's a deep, deep, deep subject, but then the marks, his colors, the figures, um, these these sort of like buses and wheels, and there's almost a sense of like a ship, <laughs> like in, at the very top. Um, so, you know, there's these, these, these complex marks and conversations that he's talking about in this work um, that makes you think about like, you know, uh, Especially in the pandemic, you know, we right. had um, the global pandemic. We had the summer of racial reckoning. Um, a lot, a lot to think about. A lot. To think <laughs> um, about. So in in 2022, and this is actually, I think, one of the more recent works in the show. Yes. Um, that you know, his his work really is coming full circle in so so many ways, like social justice and community. You know, all these different things we've talked about, but this is. You know, I think this is one of those works where Floyd was like, this is me, you know, this defines me. Um, and, and that, I mean, I think that it's a power, it's a powerful work it's, for it's us. It's really to... powerful. And, you know, the title again, sets you up for kind of where to start, mm -hmm. but the painting sets you up for where you're going. That's right. And so this, if you're going on here, you're moving throughout this whole thing. And by the time you realize it's a complex journey and you can think about that journey, but then you overlay faith, you overlay these other things and you find pathways that allow you to, to kind of traverse that in a, in a good way. Yeah, and the Sirigu, that aspect allows you to really think about that latter part in a, in a different way, right? right. The, the ancestors and then, and then what does that mean for us as African-Americans trying to trying to, to process all of that, right? That we can right. find inspiration as he has in ancestors, family, um, in communities within in Africa um, that are continuing to be creative to this day. So there's, there's a lot to contemplate there. Thank you, Floyd. <laughs> so I think if, I don't know if we're out of time, but if there are questions, we're happy to, to... take questions. I think it's amazing that he was handed, you were handed some writing implement or drawing implement at the age of three or four. I don't mean, I think it was three that we heard. Four. Okay. And um, it must have just freed you somehow and made this cre remarkable creativity last all these years because you were in charge of that crayon or chalk. <laughs> <laughs> and I think whoever did that for you gave you such a gift and gave us all the gift. So I think it's great. And I'm glad you remembered that part. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I, I was just so impressed by the confidence of the hand, the mark making, that's a lifetime of work that goes into each drawing and each painting. And but the, but you get the sense, you know, there's that famous movie of Picasso, you know, where he's making marks on glass and he has a brush and the white paint and so on. And it's just amazing the way he creates out of nothing, and he doesn't hesitate, doesn't stop, just 
you know, it flows. And you get this sense, I agree, of the joy of a child using a tool like a crayon or a paintbrush and making those marks. But it's now so much richer, so much fuller, because it's a mature artist who really knows what they're doing. So it, it's very, very successful and moving. Thank you. All right, heading your way. I saved my tough question for you. <laughs> you. <laughs> so when you were uh, laying out the show, there was a moment with Mafa, and you were like, it has to be at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you said something about it also being kind of a moment to reflect to Sirgun 1619. And it created this cohesion, this moment across the exhibition space. Do you mind talking a bit about that? Because I think it's extremely important for when somebody explores that space. I think, you know, it goes back to the idea that, you know, we really wanted to articulate, you know, how these themes have been, you know, really a core part of his practice from beginning to end. And I think having Mafa at the beginning was essential because it's it's that constant memory, right? Memory, the um, acknowledgement of his people and celebration of his people and what um, as African-American people, what we've had to go through being like such a strong piece from the beginning of his career to the end really having that marker of like, okay, this is, this is gonna hold, it, hold this. <laughs> this is gonna come back again at the end. Um, but also just the awareness that um, this is something that has been a thread, you know, um, throughout. And there, it, in some ways, like we, we, we really played with like, we could put it in this section, we could put it in the next right. section, but it just really felt like it, it belonged in social justice and community. Yeah, and you know, for those who may not know the term, uh, MAFA is uh, referencing really what a lot of people talk about is the Holocaust of, of African uh, of people being shipped out of Africa, mm -hmm. and uh, the whole uh, business of, of slave trade. You know, people being taken, mm -hmm. and 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 I think it's a Swahili term, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, but. Um, it, it is a, I mean, you know, we talk often, we have talked often, and people have expressed that this show has a great deal of, of positivity, of joy, mm -hmm. of uplift in it. Um, and Floyd will talk about that. I want to offer hope. Mm -hmm. But his eyes are wide open, you know, mm -hmm. and he is um, firmly aware of where he's been, his experience. Uh, back in the 60s, mm -hmm. civil rights, and and the whole journey of, of people who are African American in this country, um, and so we we find that throughout. It's never forgotten, mm -hmm. you know. In in the uh, in the uh, many paths one direction, there's a little figure of a man down at the bottom. It says, "I am a man from Memphis," right, and. Uh, you, you find that throughout all of the works. I mean, not maybe in every single work you'll see that, but um, the idea of the pyramid, you know, referencing Egypt. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's, it's not a, an exclusion from, you know, those, the art is not an exclusion from that past experience. Mm -hmm. It is deeply embedded in there. Um, and it's okay, you know, you, you see that, you see Floyd's fortitude and perseverance in saying, I'm not, I'm going forward. I'm gonna make my art and I'm not gonna let that define me in terms of my art. And being that he, you know, was a child of the civil rights movement, um, was impacted by major artists um, within the black arts movement, I yeah. think Mafa, in the time in which that term was really coined, it really fits well with the Reverend and and in right. his sense of 
at that time feeling like he needed to be like more literal about that. But then also the arc and that transition where he realized he could also be a, a little bit more expressive about it as well. So it, for me, it also speaks to that transition um, and that I can still talk about these big, heavy issues that have happened to us as a people. Um, and, and as he would say, my people, like um, that he can still talk about that, but in a, in a more expressive way, because there has been a lot of pressure on black artists to be so very literal in their representations. And so I think, you know, allowing that to be in social justice and community, it just felt like right. so necessary for that. You know, that last image that we looked at, it, it allows for the complexity mm -hmm. of life to be present mm -hmm. and not overwhelming in a way. It allows for the complexity of an individual person, love, happiness, uh, sadness, all of those things that you think, okay, well, if my artwork maybe is driven by a singular um, theme, singular idea, what about these? That's a part of me too, right? I'm a man, so. Yeah. One more. Um, thank you both for this conversation. It's been so enlightening to look at the details of the symbolism here. And um, I want to say welcome to Madison. And I want to thank Mocha for bringing the exhibition here. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a fresh breath, breath of air, uh, also coming after Faisal's exhibition. So I, I just love this. I want to thank uh, Floyd Newsom. I haven't met him. I know Lauren. I haven't met Lauren except by Facebook. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank you all for uh, for coming. And um, I didn't see the show last night, but I will see the show. And um, I love the symbolism, the connection to Africa, the symbolism, whether you're going not coming out of Egypt or going over into Ghana, uh, the representation is symbolic, bringing us back into family and to women. I don't, I understand why people might tell women to stay away from family, but I don't understand why men. <laughs> uh, so I need to have more information about that. And also, um, I just uh, thinking about this work and the freedom and the symbolism there, I'm also reminded, you know, you talk about your, the connection to the Black Arts Movement. The Sam Gilliam and his abstract expressionism, I remember April 4th. Mm -hmm. in which he's honoring Dr. Martin Luther King. Very mm -hmm. powerful abstract work. And also the freedom of hand reminds me in a way of Basquiat mm -hmm. and uh, the kind of uh, symbolism that he had. But of course, it's very distinctive in the way in which you're bringing uh, your signature style here. So I think I've said enough, but thank you all so much. That sounds like a nice note to end on. Uh, thank you very much, Mark Cervenka and Lauren Cross. And everyone can join for continued conversations in the lobby or head upstairs to the second floor main galleries and check out the exhibition one more time. But uh, thanks again, Lauren and Mark. And of, and of course, thanks to Floyd Newsom.